Hello people and today I've come up to Bulkello for a wee walk. It's quite early in the morning. It's strange. You know what I'm going to talk about. It's been an awful week. Mizier cat. I don't know you think bloody cat. But we had her for 21 years. She arrived in our house in a wee ball of fur that hid under the couch for about two weeks when she was eight weeks old back in 2000. So, well, she passed away on Thursday. And although she was old and she was wasting away, but I mean, by the end, she was just skin and bone. There was nothing to her. And she wasn't eating, she was, she was barely drinking. She couldn't, she could barely move, but even despite that, it's, it's still, it's still quite upsetting because she was, a, she was a part of the family. And I mean, we've been in the house for 26 years and Mizzy was in it for 21, so William's 28, so she'll be much missed. I mean, it's, and I'm at that phase just now, I know people are thinking, well, get a grip, it's just a cat. I mean, there are worse things in the world, and, and she was 21, so she lived a good life, and we must have done something right, something right, if she lasted that long. And I suppose we did, but it's still, you walk into the kitchen and you look where her bowls were and there's nothing there. You, you go downstairs where her tray was and it's gone. And then you go upstairs to the bedroom and she's not lying on the bed. And that's where she all latterly anyway, when she started getting old and, well, started getting old, she was old, but she started really deteriorating about, maybe about two years ago. We noticed that she wasn't eating and then we checked and we found she had a rotten tooth. So we took her to the vet and got that done. And while she was at the vet, they did tests on her. They did blood tests. And they said that she had some problem with her liver function and some traces of arthritis in her back, in her hip, back hip. But at that time, it didn't seem to slow her down. So the, the vet gave us some, gave us some tablets. And that, that was a f that was fun and games getting Mizzy to take her tablets. The vet said just hide them in her food, so we did that. Hide them in her food. And then when we go to ch clean out her bowl, there's the tablets sitting there. She'd eat she'd eat around them, or she would eat and spit them out more often than not. So I had to grab her and actually physically th stick the tablets down her throat. And if you ever tried doing that with a cat, I'll tell you it's not the easiest thing in the world. They seem to grow about 10 pairs of legs and they're very flexible. But anyway, she started going downhill about two years ago and then she, she didn't really want to go out. She was she was still eating and she was still doing her business and still drinking, but she was spending more and more time up in the bedroom, on the bed. And in the winter, she'd come down and be with us in the, in the family room and she would sit under the radiator where the pipes came. So she she knew all the hot spots, she knew where to go. So she did that. And then maybe about, I don't know, maybe about a year ago, she started, she started mewing a lot. Now this is something she never ever used to do. Mizzy never used to mew at all. She was a very quiet cat. The only, t the only time you heard her was when she was maybe sitting at the window chattering at the birds uh, or if she was really really hungry then she would meow or if there was chicken fried chicken on the go then she would meow but she started meowing quite a lot but I mean she would wail and then we'd go and see what she was doing and she would run upstairs I think it was just she was wanting someone to go up and be with her but then the wail became it became more persistent and she you would see her standing, standing, well she went deaf, she was deaf as, deaf as a post, so you could sneak up behind her and she would jump, but you used to find her standing on the stairs just staring into the distance and, and meowing, 
and you go up and she would be surprised because she was deaf, she would be surprised when she when you you came up to her and then she'd just run up into the bed. And it be, it began to become it began to become more and more persistent and then she was wailing just about all the time. And then she started wailing at night as well. She would wake up in, in the middle of the night and jump down and wail. So we thought maybe it was she was struggling up and down the stairs, so we put a water we put a water bowl for her up outside the bedroom door, and that seemed to help for a while. She was but she was drinking a lot of water, and then one day a couple of weeks ago I saw her struggling up and down the stairs to get to her tray, so I thought maybe it'd be better if we moved the tray up to the top floor as well to save her from having to because she was spending all her time on the bed. I think it'd save her, you know, struggling down the stairs and back up again. So we put the tree outside the bedroom door. Uh, and then, like old, all old cats, she started to get kind of grubby looking. She wasn't taking care of her fur. Uh, she wasn't taking care of her, her claws. So we started doing all that. But we got shampoo, gave her baths combed her hair to try and get the mats out, <sighs> clipped her nails, because she wasn't doing it anymore. And then about two, three weeks ago, we decided, let's take her to a cat groomer and, and get her looking nice. So that's what we did. We took her along to the cat groomer. The cat groomer got her looking lovely, got all the tugs out, cleaned her up. And she, but, but when she got back, because the, the cat groomer had, had cut some of her fur around her back legs and her belly, when we, when she got out of the car, when we got home, she was walking and you could see, you could really see the problems she was having with her legs. So, so that was about two weeks ago. So she went upstairs and then she just started deteriorating from then. She, she wasn't using her tray, she was peeing peeing in the corners and then I was finding I was finding cat poo downstairs where her, her tree used to be uh, and then on on Monday and Tuesday she seemed to be well not fine but she seemed to be managing okay she was she was kind of creeping about the house and she was she was l sort of lively but then on Wednesday it just all switched off I, I came upstairs and she was just lying on the floor and I looked at her and there was there was no light in her eyes. She was uh, she had no strength in her muscles. So I picked her up, put her on the bed, and then she jumped down, went back over to her tree, back over to her water bowl and just lay down with her head, her chin in the water bowl. And then on Wednesday night she was on the bed and she jumped down and I thought she'd, I didn't know where she was because I got up quite early. She wasn't on the bed and I couldn't see her. So I was searching the house for her and then Linda shouted that she was under the coat rack in the bedroom. So she was just lying there. So I picked her up and I took her out and went for a, we went for a wee walk around the garden. She was, she was still seeing, she was still looking around her and kind of taking things in. And... I mean, oh, she couldn't hear anything, but when birds were going past and she, she was following them. And then I just sat in the garden with her, put her down and, and she just, it was good, she was finished. So then I brought her into the house and I had work to do, so I'd, I put her on the, the chair next to me on a cushion, a nice soft chair and wrapped her in her blanket. And she sat there while I was working and then she started going into her death throes and I was stroking her and it was just terribly, terribly sad because I just think back to all the fun times we had with her I mean I know you're saying get a grip, she was a cat and she was 21 yeah, she was a cat and she was 21 but she was my cat and I think I could happily have managed another 21 years with her but as it is, now she's buried in the garden and we put a birch tree on top of her. So the tree will forever be called Gary. Eh, Gary. The tree will be forever. It was going to be called Gary, but now it's going to be called Mizzy. Anyway, I'm going to take a wee wander up to 
Well, up towards Ochter House. I'm not going up to Ochter House just because it's a nice day. So hopefully the next video will be a bit less cheery, a, a bit less morbid. And anyway, I'm blabbering. See you later. Ciao, ciao, ciao.